there's a programming pattern that's especially popular when making games called state or finite state machines. It consists of breaking down, for example, a character's different actions into individual objects, or in the case of Godot, it allows you to split the character's code into short scripts, as we've done in this 2D game. In this video, we're going to compare that to this 3D project that has a character that's about as complex but doesn't use a finite state machine. Here's the 2D game in action, so you can see a bit uh, what the state machine does. The enemies and the player character both use a state machine. Uh, and you can attack, change weapons, you can ward, you can double jump, you can climb ladders, those kinds of things. The character has quite a few actions, and here's the first advantage of using a state machine. We can split each of these actions into separate objects, and in this case, we use nodes to make things visual for you, and each of these nodes has a separate script. So you separate concern. For example, if we have an issue with a climb platform state and mechanic, we can open the script and we know that the bug is most likely in there. We can very easily insert breakpoints and use the debugger to see what is happening in the code. This brings us to the first disadvantage. It's that your code is split across, well, in this case, multiple files. Uh, but if you use a single file with inner classes in GDScript, this would be split across multiple classes. And the problem about that is you need to jump around to get the full logic of your character. And also you will have some boilerplate. So for example, you need uh, to define functions to enter and exit the current state. And this uh, helps avoid some bugs, but at the same time, this can make your code quite a bit longer. If we compare to our 3D project here, it doesn't compare one to one because it's a different game, uh, but look at this. We have the player character, and if I open the one script that controls the player, it's really long, yes, but if I go to the bottom, it's about 250 lines of code. And this is a 3D project. Uh, 3D requires more code when it comes to moving objects. Uh, if we compare to the finite state machine in the other game, uh, we need more code there, uh, a couple hundred more. And this is just because when you have very specific code for your character controller, you don't need any extra boilerplate. To the question, when should I use a finite state machine? There's no clear cut answer. Like all patterns, it comes with trade-offs. You can try it and see if splitting your states makes things easier for you to manage. I also recommend it in cases like AI because it helps to sequence patterns uh, on enemies. So finite state machines can be really nice for this. But I also recommend trying this uh, big blob of code here you can see for our 3D player character because if you manage to master that, it doesn't make the code necessarily much harder to understand, it can make it shorter and faster to modify as well. I can only recommend that you try both approaches very seriously, that you gain some experience with both and make educated decisions in each project and for each character. On this channel, I answer your questions about Godot and game development in less than five minutes. If you have questions you'd like me to answer, please ask in the comments below. Oh, and subscribe for more.